mathematics alive. This video is an introduction to a series of videos on my favorite mathematics subject, geometry. Geometric designs and applications are all around us. A better understanding of geometry will lead us to a greater appreciation of our environment. We see geometry in patterns of nature and in man-made designs like buildings and even in the clothes we wear. So let's start with the definition of geometry. Geometry is a branch of mathematics which deals with points, lines, planes, and solids. It includes finding areas and volumes of geometric figures. The name geometry was derived from the Greek words geo, which means earth, and metron, which means measure. Originally, geometry was used to measure the fields of ancient Egyptians. The yearly floods of the Nile River washed away their landmarks, and so they used geometry to determine the sizes of their fields and put proper landmarks in place. Undefined terms in geometry. The study of geometry begins with three very important terms, the simplest terms which we will be using throughout this series of lessons. First is point. It must be imagined as having no dimensions, no width, no length, and no thickness. An example is a corner of a sheet of paper or the tip of a well-sharpened pencil or a dot on a piece of paper or even the tip of the needle. Second, line. It is straight of infinite length, but it has no width or thickness. Example, the edge of a sheet of paper, which extends indefinitely in both directions. A very fine stretched string of infinite length and the intersection of two plane walls, which extends indefinitely in both directions. So if we imagine the two plane walls to be this and this side, this is the intersection and it represents a line. The third undefined term is a plane. It is a flat surface of infinite width or length but it has no thickness. Examples are the flat surface of a table, which extends indefinitely in all directions. The walls of a room extending indefinitely in all directions. And the ceiling of this room extending indefinitely in both directions. How do this knowledge of geometry come to us in our present time. Ancient mathematicians passed on the, ge the geometric knowledge and even the knowledge of mathematics from one generation to another. And one very important character that contributed a lot to passing on his geometric knowledge to us was Euclid. Euclid is hailed to be the father of geometry. He made a compilation of geometric postulates and theorems, and this compilation consisted of 13 books entitled The Elements. Euclid lived during the reign of King Ptolemy I. According to a historian Proclus, the king asked Euclid if there were no easier way to learn geometry than by studying the elements. And Euclid's reply was his famous line, there is no royal road to geometry. Meaning, if you want to learn geometry, you have to sweat it out. Assumptions in geometry. Geometry is based on assumptions that we accept without proof. These assumptions are divided into two sets, namely axioms and postulates. Number one, axioms. Axioms are general assumptions that govern not only geometry, but also arithmetic, 
algebra, and other fields of mathematics. They are also called properties. Examples, properties of real numbers, properties of equality. Number two, postulates. Postulates are assumptions used particularly in geometry and in no other field of mathematics. Some postulates in geometry. Number one, two points determine exactly one line. Some applications of these postulates are a level hose, which is used to mark two points of the same height. And then the carpenters use a string to connect these two points and determine a straight horizontal line. Postulate two, two distinct lines cannot have more than one point of intersection. And this is pretty obvious. Postulate three, three points are contained in at least one plane or three non-collinear points are contained in exactly one plane. Okay, look at the example in the tripod. The tip of the foot of the tripod are contained in exactly one plane, the plane of the floor. And then um, I have another example, this tray. Some waiters used only three fingers to support a tray. And these fingers can balance the tray because the three points represented by the fingers contain only one plane or, or determine the plane of this tray. Postulate four, if two distinct planes intersect, their intersection is a line. You can find some concrete examples in your house to illustrate postulate four. Theorem and corollary. A theorem is a formal mathematical statement that needs to be proven. It has two parts, namely the hypothesis and the conclusion. Example, vertical angles are congruent. In the if-then form, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. If two angles are vertical is the hypothesis, and then they are congruent is the conclusion part. We can prove a theorem in several related steps, and we reason out each step using a given fact, a definition, an axiom, a postulate, or a previously proven theorem. Corollary. A corollary is a theorem which is a direct result of a given theorem. It is an offshoot of an existing theorem or a mother theorem. And that's all for the introduction to this exciting journey of learning geometry. Remember the terms I have discussed here because we will be using them in our next videos. Thanks for watching. Join me once again in my next video. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel by clicking the button below.